Alright y'all, here again with another video. So in this video, I'm um, going over three emails. They're trying to get caught up on the emails. I don't want them to run out of control. I mean, get out of control. So, you know, let's jump straight into it. Don't waste no time. So, the first email goes, Hey Warren, my ex is in a, you know, a new relationship. Will she be satisfied in that new relationship without me? Okay, this person want to know, will they love one, their ex love one, be satisfied in a new relationship without them? So, the answer, jumping straight into it, and you know, I'm going to explain myself a little bit more. This video might be a little long, just stab tad bit. So, the thing is, your ex, especially if they're a narcissistic person, if they're a narcissistic person, they will never, ever, ever ever be satisfied see the thing is your ex can never be satisfied and the number one reason why is because they're emotion a narcissistic person is an emotional person they feelings and emotion change like the wind and most people are like well what about dudes dudes are emotional too sometimes sometimes some of these dudes are more emotional than some of these females the thing is they emotion change like the weather they never you know they're stable you know one moment they can be talking to you the next moment they flying off the handle getting emotional crying and cussing people out and all that stuff so the thing is if somebody emotion changes like the wind and changes like the weather how can they you know be happy they can be happy one moment the next moment they sad then they sad then they go to happiness the happiness, then they start, then they confuse. They, they don't be happy. That kind of person will never be satisfied. So don't worry about if they satisfy over there. Because the thing is, what they get and receiving over there is the same thing they was doing with you. And don't worry about what goes on in the relationship. Behind closed door, you don't know what goes on behind closed door. There's no telling. They probably over there beating the hell out your ex over there. And your ex probably, you know, don't want to go through another fair relationship. They might don't have, a, you know, a backup supply right then and there. So they put up with it. They put up with it. You know, never know. They probably introduce the new painkiller to the family members. You know, they be speeding up the relationship. And the family members probably either like them. Sometimes they like the new person. Some sometimes because some family members be like you know what i like the last person a little bit better so they might you know try to speed up that relationship and the new person like man start drama now nine times out of ten they be monkey branching to these low-hanging fruits anyway now let me explain to some people out there that email me and you know send me comments warren what is low-hanging fruit a low-hanging fruit is you know, um, pretty much a easy pick. Somebody that's, you know, it's not hard to get at all. It's kind of like when you go to a fruit tree, the fruits that's already on the ground, you just pick it up and eat it. If it's fresh, if it's not rotten, it's easy to get. You can just pick it up. But the fruit that's hard to get, you know, that's the fruit, you know, that has value. Low hanging fruit easy pick so therefore there you go but to sum up this guy email the number one reason your ex will never be satisfied with you is because their emotions also let me throw in this too when you was with this person this narcissistic person and stuff like that because you know sometimes they stay with you know the uh, supply for a good length of time you probably been that supply who they stay with for a good length of time so, and while you, was in a, while you was in a relationship with that person, you set the standards pretty high. Pretty high. It's like, man, I done, you know, done got locked up with this person. I done fight my mama for this person. I done convinced my family that I'm going to marry and be with this person and all this type of stuff. You know some of y'all out there. 
Y'all went against y'all own mama and daddy for that narcissistic person out there. Y'all know y'all mama and daddy or family member probably not told y'all, you know, that, that person ain't, you know, that baby, that person ain't for you. You know, and you and your feelings, you probably told him you need to mind your damn business. You let me do my own thing. You don't went against your family for that narcissistic person, didn't you? I'll wait. You know you did. I know, I know I'm talking I'm talking from experience. I know you went against my own mama and I'm like, you know what? This is who I like, mom. I'll pick who I pick and I'll date who I want to date. But the thing is. Y'all done went through all of that, that sticky thing, and y'all went through the ups and downs and all that stuff like that, and probably the narcissist, the narcissistic person got complacent in the relationship and want to venture out there and see what else is out there. It's natural. That what happens. You know, they mind like the wonder. Keep in mind, they like little kids. You know, they can play with a little, they, uh, they always have one toy, one favorite toy. Because keep in mind, narcissistic people are like little children, like little kids. And like a little kid, they always have that one favorite toy. But as soon as another toy come along, they want to play with that just because it's new. That's it. That's, you know, just, they'll throw that little toy to the side like, uh, and go play with this other toy. And they'll play with it and play with it. What other toys out there? And they want to go have more toys and stuff like that. But that one toy they left behind. The one toy that they disregard. When somebody else pick that toy up and start playing with it, whatever toy that narcissist have, they drop it. Like, uh, give me back my old toy. That's mine. I want my toy back. And they will never be satisfied. Never. Because of that. If y'all get it, share it with someone that, you know, don't get it. Let me break it down again. A narcissistic person or is similar to a child. It's like a big kid in a grown person body. See, just like a child, they always have one favorite toy. Just like that little kid off Charlie Brown had that look, his favorite blanket. You know, just like that, they have one favorite toy. The toy represents you. But if you don't get it, the toy represents you. So anyway... So the thing is, when they go out there and venture and play with other toys, the toys represent other people. So they go play with other toys and stuff like that. And the toy, their favorite toy, they disregard for a while because they, they bore with it. They complacent with it. They feel like they're not happy with it. You know, so they try to venture out and see what else is out there, what other toys is out there. Not knowing that one toy that they played with all along, they had it right there in their toy, toy box the whole time. And that toy can fulfill every need that that narcissistic might have. So they go out there and play with other toys. As soon as someone else comes along and play with their favorite toy, they drop. The previous toy, they I me mean, drop the current draw toy, and they want the previous toy back. Cause a narcissistic person have an image, and you know they like to put on the great pretenders, and they don't want to see nobody else playing with their stuff. If that make any sense, so I'm not gonna drill on that too much longer. You know they'll never be satisfied because. Uh, that but what I just said so moving on going to the next email um come from this young lady do you think my ex is thinking about me during the quarantine do you think my ex is thinking about me during the quarantine well first off I don't know what the hell your ex thinking because I'm not no damn mind reader I gotta continuously say this. I'm not no damn mind reader. I don't have no little crystal ball. I don't have no little cards, no tarot cards reader. I don't know what people are thinking. This study, this is how you can tell if they're thinking about you or not. When the last time they reach out to you? When the last time they check up on you and see if you was alive, you're not dead in the ditch somewhere? When the last time they 
talk to a family member or so anybody concerning you. I'll wait. Now, I'm not talking about an indirect type way where they post online like, you know what? That special somebody I'm thinking about. That can be anybody. I'm not talking about indirect stuff. I'm talking about directly call you, go to your house, and talk to directly to you. If they haven't done any of that, they're not thinking about you. They ain't thinking, concerned about you. See, the thing is, most people are like, well, they can be over there thinking about me, but not reaching out to me. What good is that? What good is that? I still take it as you you not you don't care enough about my well-being to, to reach out to me to see how I'm doing. You know, so therefore you dead to me. Because I see it as I'm dead to you. See the thing is the phone work both ways. It work both ways. The same way they can, you know, you can pick up a phone and call them or text them or email them or whatever you need to do, send a smoke signal, whatever, to get in contact with them, they can do it too. If they not doing it, what does that tell you? We don't go by what people say. We go by what people do. People actions speak louder than words. What is their actions telling you? That light bulb went off yet. Think about it. What is people action telling you? They can be telling you right in your face, right in your face, that I don't care nothing about you. People's silence, their silence speaks volumes. What is it telling you? Most I'm not telling you to come up with some delusional ass thought that you're gonna come up with, or maybe you know they're this, maybe they're that. Because, you know, another question that feeds in to this question is, how can they be thinking about me if they with the rebound person? So if the rebound person keeping them occupied, they can't be thinking about me. The thing is, it works like this. Even though they're not, you know, they're physically thinking about you and all that stuff, you can cross their mind every now and then. If you spend a long period of time with that person, you probably have a bond with that person. So it's hard to forget about somebody you have a bond with. If you spend 10 more years with that person and you was married with that person, you have kids with the person, you know, y'all have history together and all that stuff. You know, unless they get, you know, have one of those little things they have on men in black, they just flash themselves with that. They're going to think about you. But the thing is, none of that matters if they not reach out to you, you know. I still think about my kindergarten teachers and stuff like that. I want to, you know, where are they at now? Am I going to reach out to them? No. No. But the more of this story is this. They can think about you every now and then. Even if they with the rebound. You know, even if they will. Because a lot of times, you know, some things your, that your ex rebound do, does will remind your ex of you. Let me say that again. For the people in the back. Some things your ex re new level painkiller substitute teacher low hanging fruit whatever y'all want to be whatever brand you put on this person whatever sometimes the things they do reminds your ex of you. That's why sometimes your ex be over there calling them your name. That's why. <laughs> that's why sometimes well a lot of times. The new painkiller, low hanging fruit, the new substitute teacher, the stand in, you know what I'm saying? The stunt devil, stunt devil, um, the off brand person, the generic person to say, you know, the Corbin copy, you know, they be want to fight and all that stuff. They, they don't even know nothing about you. But the way your ex talk about you, the way sometimes your name come up during inappropriate situations probably like when they you know getting it in and stuff like that your name might come out like oops <laughs> you know some people y'all some people that's probably watching this already in the experience that i know what i'm talking about you know um 
that's why the new person sees you as a threat because the thing is you still on your ex mind they're gonna play that hard to get role but it's all good they're gonna play the hot and cold role and all that stuff because they're not fully invested in that new relationship no how can you jump out of a relationship that y'all you know you build a bond with and you spend time y'all have history the family know you the community know y'all been together for so many, so long y'all broke off for whatever reason then instead of taking the time to work on yourself and taking the time to reflect on what's really going on they jump into another relationship with this off-brand ass person over here so instead of taking the time and just heal the pro doing the healing process they jump over here so therefore they have all of this history going right into this you know new relationship that's the recipe for disaster you putting yourself on a, se a road of self-destruction when you do stuff like that when well when they do stuff like that you on a road of self-destruction sooner or later you're gonna self-destruct you're not taking the time to heal you need time to heal you need time to get this previous person which is you out of your system because all you do all they doing is jumping from taking that relationship and everything they learn and know and know how to do and experience over here and they're taking it right over here and they're gonna do it with the same person notice a lot of times a lot a lot a lot of times these new people that they monkey branch too if you stop and look you're like damn if I was a great value person <laughs> well let me fill in what great value mean great value is like when you go to Walmart they have the name brand then they got the off-brand product that's a little bit cheaper keyword cheaper then you got the high price the you know, the name brand company whatever it may be then you got the off-brand product for cheaper you know but if you pay attention to it like damn this person look like a great value version of me damn you know why is that it's because like i said earlier they leave out this relationship they had that history and all that stuff they learned in that relationship they taking all of that and trying to put it in someone similar to you because in reality they want the same thing they had over here but a little bit less of you no know, restrictions restrictions if i'm saying it right less you no know, less rules they trying to put all of you in a 20 percent because you the 80 percent they just are trying to ball all that 80 percent and condense it and put it into the 20 percent that's why they can go over here and tell the 20 percent shut your ass up and get out my face and do all sorts of stuff like that then when the 20 percent out the way they on the phone calling you like you know what man what's up what, 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 what you doing what you got on you know stuff like that you know i ain't even happy over here with this new person they beating on me they don't even feed me you know what that cooking that you used to cook man i miss that you know i ain't got my nails done since you know since you no know, since we've been separated i ain't got my hair nor nails done none of that stuff my toes look like crow feet none of that stuff got done up since i left you yep this person don't even take care of me no nothing yeah, they're on probation. See, that's what some of the things they say when the 20% is not around. Because the 20% 20 is nothing more than a fantasy and an infatuation. Fantasies always come to an end when reality step in. Sooner or later, reality going to step in, then the whole world going to crumble apart. And then when that world starts crumbling apart, it's like a sinking ship. Like a ship going down. See, that narcissistic person like, you know what? I don't want to fucking drown. So let me jump ship. And your boat just happened to come by. And they'll probably jump on your ship. But don't you goddamn let these people come back to you because your life is not a revolving door. Stop responding when these people respond to you. At the end of the day, they made a choice. Even if you left the relationship, you made your choice. Live with it. So... Jumping on to the next email because that's what I'll do. I want to keep this shit rolling. Um, 
this next email um, goes in a long ass story and stuff like that and how the person did them wrong but the question at the end of the long ass email the four page letter email is how do I get instant karma how do I get instant karma a lot of people been asking me that one question how do I get karma or when do karma kicks in so here to do a service and I'm gonna say it. This is how you get instant karma. It might don't be instant like that right there, but it, it, it you will get karma. Now here's the part of the video that you know the sensitive ass people might want to cut off. If you're a sensitive ass person and you're one of the great debaters that want to debate on everything, like hey Warren, that's not the right thing to do. Cut the video off now. Get off. All right. Okay. Now, don't, now that don't suck ass people out the way, now let's go ahead and jump into it. The first thing you want to do is increase your value. Increase your value. That, whatever you need to do to increase your value, do it immediately. I mean like ASAP. Like really fast. Increase your value. Whatever you need to do. Two, you need to walk away. Just walk away, and when you walk away, don't give no damn closure. None. No explanation, no nothing. Just walk the hell away. Like, what the hell wrong with you? you no, know, walk away. Just up and leave. No closure, no explanations, no explaining stuff. Don't do none of that stuff. Just go. Just be ghosts. Like, damn. You leave, when you do that stuff and walk away and don't give no closure, and stuff like that, it'll always be open. You and it'll always resonate in that you know that narcissistic person mind. See, like I said, narcissistic. It's like a big ass kid. Walk away. See, they hate rejection. They can't stand rejection. They can't stand it. They can't put up with it. See, they hate rejection and the word no. Those two combined. They hate rejection and the word no. So when you walk away and they don't get no closure, they're always in their little mind be wondering, what the hell happened? I wonder what happened. But some people can't walk away like that because, you know, they have situations and, you know, you know attachments and all that stuff. So what you do, you ignore them and you come up with a plan in silence to get rid of them, to get rid of them. You, you plot in silence. You just sit back, come up with a master plan, plot on them to get rid of them out your life. I'm not saying kill nobody, to get rid of them. Erase them out your life. You come up with a plan. See, when you ignore these demons and stuff like that, that's the same as telling them no. And they can't take it. Now, the thing is, the flip side of that is, they might try to do you in before you they do you in. Let me say that again. When you start ignoring them, they will get hateful and mad. So participate the drama that comes with this. They don't like to be ignored. They want to know why you ignoring me and stuff like that. I expect you to just sit here and take my crap. No. Mm -mm. Sooner you start doing these things, watch karma. This, the tables start turning instantly. Like what the fuck? They, they not keep keep in mind. They not expecting this so that's why it works so quickly see the thing is when you walk away with no closure they're not expecting that when you just start ignoring them and stuff like that and plotting against them and you shutting down certain conversations you're not interacting with them and stuff like that you keeping them you know texting them with one word texts and stuff like that and not participating for none of that they'll drop what is, what they doing to see what's going on over here is you interacting with someone else remember they hate to see someone else play with their toys. You to them, you're a toy. So, and another another thing too, to accomplish all of that, you got to be cold-hearted. You have to shut down your emotions. You can't have no kind of feelings, no emotions whatsoever. See, the thing is, at this time, it's a battle of the mind. It's a battlefield in your mind. Think about it. Who goes on the fucking battlefield having compassion, 
and mercy and a heart for the enemy. Think about it. Now, let me say that again, because I know the great debaters, they probably somewhere else probably still lurking and stuff like that. But listen, it's a battlefield of the mind. All of this is mental. Your thoughts are your weapons. Your ex or whoever, this goes in every area of life. They are the target. Think about it, what I'm saying. Let me say it again. This, your mind is the battlefield. Your whoever it may be, your ex, your coworker, whoever, whoever doing you wrong and you don't like it, they is the target. You don't go on the battlefield with compassion, love, and, you know, with your heart and all that stuff, cause you going you you already lost if you're doing that. You got to shut your your feelings off, become heartless, cold hearted, cold blooded. See, remember, the person who cares less has the power. The person who cares less. The person who can walk away has the power. The person who can live without the other person has the power. If you want the power and you want things to turn in your favor, cut your feelings off and master yourself and your emotions. First, that's what you have to do. Self-mastery. Because you can't fight against them if you letting yourself defeat you. You giving in to every little thing and all that stuff and you ain't got no self-discipline. You're going to lose each and every battle. So you have to start with self. Self. Battlefield of the mind. First, your first target, your first enemy, you. Fight yourself first. Get yourself under control. That's your training. Because you can't go in no battle you don't know how to fight. You got to know how to fight and know who you fighting against. Okay, how can I fight? You train your mind self-mastery. So you won't, you know, you grow a backbone, you become stronger. You don't fall for each and every little thing that you see and stuff like that. Oh, I get in my feelings and I just go back to the person. That shit. That's you doing that stuff because you weak and you don't have no self-discipline. Get some self-discipline. Become stronger. Find out who your target is. And once you find out who your target is, eliminate them. Get rid of them. Get get that get them out your life by any means. And when they out your life, you do good. I know a lot of people like, well, damn, Warren, that was kind of heartless. At this point, you have no heart. Because the thing is, the more you care, the more you suffer. How that caring and, you know, leading with your heart and your feelings, how that working out for you? Some people are just not for you. If they're not for you, they are the enemy. They are the enemy. If they're not for you, and they're not helping you, they're not helping you grow, advance in life, and they're pulling you back and holding you down, get rid of them. I know they say, I'm talking about that virus that's going around, but they had enemies wrong, you know, going around here before that virus come around, and that enemy might be sitting right next to you. That person that you know envy you the most is right next to you. A lot of y'all sleeping with the damn enemy and y'all okay with it. Them other sucker video, like I was saying, to finish off this video before my I ran out of space. So follow those things I was saying and you should be okay. Now, when you say this, then I'm jumping off it. You know, first. I charge for my time. I don't know how many times I got to say this. It seems like all the people that don't want to pay me no money, they always say, well, I don't, I don't even know that. But the people that really want my help and they really want to you know do better and stuff like that, they always say, well, damn, here you go, Warren. There you go. See, the thing is, I charge for my time. So that's what that's why I got my information there. You know, I'm not going to be talking to random strangers for free. My time is not free. And also, I'm not looking for no friends. No, I'm not looking for no friends. I work alone. I'm not looking for no female friends. Definitely not off this. You know, this is you know what I do to help people. This is my way of giving back. Because I, some of those situations I went through and 
I experienced it. And you know, I'm like, like I said before, I'm like a news reporter. And I'm like, look, just not in the mood to make stank, stank. That's not, you know, that's not cool. You know, let's, let's not go down this road. You know, that's gonna lead to heartbreak and stuff like that. So that's why I do this. Me, you know, trying to help. But understand, understand. Because a lot of people like to play stupid. My time is not free. I'm not looking for no friends. So let me text on my phone, tell me, hey, bro, what's up, man? Motherfucker, I don't know you. Can I help you? You know, I'm trying to spend time with my loved ones and my family and stuff like that. The videos are free. My time is not free. This is me giving back. So now that y'all have an understanding of that shit, so, oh, <laughs> like I was saying, please, please don't be texting me, asking me this number one que this question, am I single? Stop asking me that question. I'm not gonna answer that. Stop asking me that question. Am I single? But you know, just like that, if you need to get in contact with me, no matter where you at in this world, you know, um, you can always text me on WhatsApp. If you're in the United States, you can just plain out text me. The, I know what we're going through right now is you know hard and tragic and stuff like that. But you know, just keep your faith in God. If you keep on living. And keep on believing in God, you'll live to see it come again. You know, just stay strong and, you know, we'll pull through this thing together. That's all, you know, it all about is faith, you know, faith. You believe that, you know, you're going to do better, you're going to do better. Now, to the, you know, the people out there that don't believe in God and believe in a fairy tale, believe in yourself, shit. <laughs> you know, believe in yourself. I'm not bashing you. For what your belief is, I believe in God, and I believe He'll carry us through this thing. And if we live long enough, we'll see it come again. I don't want it to come again. I'm not saying for it to come again, because you know I got to clear up things for people. I don't want it to come again. What I'm saying is, we'll live through it. By us living through it, we'll get stronger. So when it do come again, we be better off. We be you know tougher. You know. We go through trials and tribulations. That's why we on this earth, to go through it. Trials and tribulations and pains and hard times, it builds us up stronger. If we don't, you know, give in to the pain. On the other side of that pain is greatness and a better version of ourselves. If we can just muster through it, we'll be okay. So, like I was saying, to the other people out there, understand, this channel is all about self-improvement self-improvement you can take these things i said and apply them in different areas of your life it necessary it don't necessarily have to be in relationship it all boils down to being the better version of yourself and putting god in your life and let him lead you and you'll be what you need to be now the thing is with that being said now you know if you got a a, a question leave it in the comments you know and thank you to the people that's in the comments that helping other people. Thank you. I'm just one person. But I try my best to answer every question. If I don't know the question or know the answer to the question, you know, I tell you to go watch somebody else's channel. Study. I can't say this enough. Study. Improve yourself. Daily. 365 days of the year. Work on yourself and better yourself. While, while you're in quarantine, you should come out this quarantine at least a little bit smarter or have a new skill or, or in shape, something. Don't just come out this quarantine the same old you. Come out bigger and better. Use this time to improve yourself. Learn a new skill, something. Read a new book. Cook a new dish, something, you know. Become a YouTuber, do something. Come up with a you know, goal list. Your happiness, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to really jump off. Your happiness, all the happiness that you seek on this planet Earth is wrapped up in your goals. It's not a person. It's not wrapped up in a person. Nobody completes you. Everything you wish for and every piece of happiness that you seek on planet Earth is wrapped up in your goals. So that's why I say set some goals and have fun accomplishing them. Getting them done. Now, with that being said... I'm gone. Peace. Bye. I'm out this piece.